Should we talk a little bit about post-match? And then we'll kind of wrap it up because I think there's a lot of ideas here that, that are simple but important. Post-match, huge recovery. A lot of players do not recover well. A lot of parents don't make their player recover well. You should take a shower in between matches. That's going to sound a little crazy, but you should always take a nice recovery shower. It's good for the mind. It's refreshing. It's good for the body. Helps flush metabolic waste. Swimming is great. Hot tub is great. Icing things that are sore to reduce inflammation. Stretching. Nutrition. Hydration. These are like just... You, you go one by one. All these things need to happen if you have if you have access to, to, to those type of to the modalities that I mentioned. But but as best you can, these things should be happening post match and preferably really soon post match. You get your nutrition in. Maybe you get a a, a balanced uh, balanced nutrition, carbohydrate and protein. And if you're not sure how much, there's a lot of good research out there on on you know based on body weight, how many grams of protein you can take in, and how much carbs you need for proper refueling. And you can experiment with that with your kids. So, so um, you get quick refueling. Sometimes a shake is the fastest way to, you know, like a, some sort of um, powder or mix is maybe the fastest way to regenerate uh, and to refuel. And then you're going to need uh, a meal, a larger meal, carbohydrate rich, if, the, if your next match is three or four hours away, if you have a match one hour away, uh, it's very, very tricky to, to, to get the recovery right because you really do. You really should take a shower at, at the minimum. You should stretch in the shower or stretch after the shower. You should you need to hydrate big time, big time hydration. You need to refuel. And then you and you can't refuel too much because you don't want to stress your dig digestive system, and the match might be one hour away. So it's very very tricky if you have uh, only like one hour break in between. And parents have to manage that. Whoever's whoever's on the road with the kid, has, the player has to manage that. The, the parent has to manage that. You have to get all those things right. And otherwise, otherwise the, the match coming up is going to be a disaster. There's going to be like the kids going to fall off a cliff. Another thing, debrief. I think a debrief, something I learned on the ambulance, you know, I'm an EMT and I volunteer for my local am ambulance in my town. And debriefing is a concept that I learned in EMS, emergency medical services. And I, I love the term. And it just means after a, a 911 call or after any kind of emergency, you come together with your team and you talk about what you did right and what you did wrong. And I find that a lot of Players do not do that. You know, the, the match is over, won or lost, and it's like, okay, I'm going to go play my video game or whatever. And I think it's very important to have a good debrief session. It can be a short debrief, debrief session. It can happen in the car. It can happen at the club. It can happen later. It doesn't have to have to be immediate, but it should happen, and it should lead to some, some ideas to work on the following week. You know, you bring the what you what you take from your debrief you write down a few notes and then you bring that back to your coach to work on during the week and then that's how you, that's the process of getting better so i just think the debrief is very important where you go over some things you did well some things you didn't do well take a few notes and then you say okay this is what i want to practice on when i go back to my to the to my coach or wherever i'm training back home a lot of kids don't do a debrief so a lot of kids forget what they did well, what they did wrong. The coach asked them on Monday or the coach asked them on Tuesday or Wednesday. And the kid's like, I don't know. I was in the middle. Is the heat a battle? And uh, I think I did this right. And sometimes you ask the parent and the parent gives you a different story than the kid. And nobody, you know, a lot of times people don't remember. So it's important to debrief relatively close to the event so that you have a good memory of what happened. You take, you, you take uh, stock of that. You, you write down some notes. And then you have some information that you can use to help yourself grow during the practice week. If players don't do that week in, week out, they usually see less progress. And that can affect their, the, you know, how fast they go up in their rating, how fast they improve over the course, over longer periods of time, like months or years. Uh, players who debrief and then go to work on those things are going to improve faster than players who play a tournament, 
don't really know what happened, and they just go back to practicing random stuff during the week. That's not an efficient way to get better. So debriefing, very important. Taking notes, very important. Did I mention parents don't stress out your kid? So after the match, please don't do stuff that stresses out your kid. So that could mean like going right up to them and telling them like, you did this right, you did this wrong, how could you do this or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, maybe the kid's not ready for that. Maybe the kid needs to go take a shower first. And you got to be smart as a parent. Let your kid cool down, especially if they lost. Maybe you do that over the post-match meal, the you know, during the nutritional time. But, you know, you have to choose selectively when's a good time to debrief and talk to your kid. And just with your body language, it, just, it can be nothing. You say nothing. But if you're clearly angry that uh, the, your kid lost the second set, played a sloppy second set, but then pulled it out in the tiebreaker in the third. I mean, you, you, you've got to cover that up. You, can, you got to be a good actor and not say, not say or do anything with your body language that makes them know that you're discouraged because the kid's going to pick up on that and then the kid might be stressed out for the next match or they might not be in a good headspace for the next match. So you got to do everything you can to keep your kid low stress so he, can, he or she can play, you know, the next match really well, obviously. Another thing that 